Hi, welcome to Inspired to Dance discussion uh, with Yannick Neza Seguin. Uh, Etienne and I were able to sit down with him uh, last summer. Uh, we uh, we have been doing this uh, incredible festival in every summer where Etienne is the executive director and I am proud to say I'm the artistic director. Uh, last summer, we had a really great project together. It was called Une Solitude Partagée. And uh, in the midst of this project, we were able to uh, to get some time with him and, uh, and we were able to uh, sit down for an inspired to dance discussion, especially for the National Ballet of Canada donors. Yeah, we, uh, we just wanted to say though first that we are, we are live in Toronto. And as you know, uh, there might be some uh, technical difficulties and we're also talk, we talked in the fall to Yannick in Montreal. So hopefully we can uh, scoop this interview back uh, in this conversation. Uh, just to give you a small uh, little resume of what that shared solitude and solitude partage project was this summer was, uh, 10 film creation. It was 10 composers that were given uh, the task of doing a new composition, given to 10 choreographers, and we filmed that together. And uh, we were lucky enough to have Yannick as a collaborator on the music side. So uh, without further ado, here is the conversation that we had, Yannick, myself, and Guillaume this fall. Uh, Yannick Neza Seguin, thank you so much for, for coming, uh, coming to chat with us today for the Inspire to Dance uh, series for our friends at the National Ballet. Um, for those who don't know you, for the two or three people that, that haven't heard about you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read your, your bio. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> so your early studies in music were in piano and voice, and at the ripe old age of 25, you became artistic director and principal conductor of the Arquies Metropolitain, a position you still hold and announced in 2019 that your annual contract is renewed for life. Uh, in that 20 years since you started at L'Orchestre Metropolitain, you also collected a few other uh, little titles, including a 10-year ten tenure at the uh, Rotterdam Philharmonic Orchestra, where you are now honorary conductor, uh, a lifetime honorary member of the Chamber of Orchestra of Europe, a principal guest conductor at the London Philharmonic Orchestra from 08 to 14, your music director of the Philadelphia Orchestra, where you have served since 2012, uh, last but the not least title is uh, in September 2018, you became the third music director of the Metropolitan Opera in New York. Um, your opera interpretation have been acclaimed in many of the world's most famous houses, such as the Metropolitan Opera, La Scala in Milan, the Royal Opera House in London, uh, three theaters that actually Guillaume has in common with you in his resume. Mm -hmm. um, you now, this is really long, but this is your fault. You've done too many things. <laughs> now, uh, you, you, uh, you now record exclusively for Deutsch Gramophone label and have done over 50 recordings, I believe. And you hold six honorary doctorates, uh, been made a com Companion of the Order of Canada, Companion of the Quebec Order for the Arts and Literature, Officer of the National Order of Quebec, Officer of the Elbe de Montréal, as well as winning, winning many a prestigious prizes. So when are you finally going to make something of yourself, Yannick? What's the... <laughs> I, I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, Nick. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're done. That's it. That that was yes. it. We just wanted That's to go all the time we had. had. Okay. No, bye. But... <laughs> <laughs> so this interview series is called, as Jen mentioned, it's called "Inspired to Dance," and uh, and and we wanted to talk to you because because you're such an inspiring figure uh, for me personally, growing up in Quebec, and and also uh, I feel like I admire you. I admire you for being such a such a. a, a such an incredible ambassador for classical music, for the classical arts, but us at the same time making it personable and also making it accessible to new audiences and so on. So, um, so thanks so much for being here. I mean, you're an inspiration. So I wanted to, I wanted to first start off with, uh, with a little sort of um, a, a very broad question that, um, that I'm just fascinated by, and it's what keeps you inspired day to day? Yeah, well, thank you first for having me. Uh, on this and I can return the same that I'm very, very, very inspired by you as a dancer and the work you're doing also uh, in Quebec and elsewhere and the collaborations, you know, and I think we share this and that's actually, actually part of my answer. Uh, we share this in common of um, always finding new ways or at least more specifically bridges you know i feel that art is all about bridges and it's all about going out of a certain comfort zone or out it's not to be new for the sake of being new but i do find my own inspiration by artists people with who i work 
and not necessarily in classical music, but also other forms of art, other, other, other genres. And the fact of getting together is, I think, the, at the, the core of the expression artistically that I like. You know, that's why I'm a conductor. I'm a gregarious person. Of course, I play piano, but this is, doesn't fulfill me as much as being with others. So this is what keeps me inspired, I think. It's really the learning from someone else and uh, putting in common our visions to make something different and, and, yeah. and bigger and greater. I mean, I, the, the, you know, I feel like dance and music kind of go together so beautifully, obviously. And, um, and I felt a little bit jealous when I found out that you had worked with dance in the past, but we had never worked together. So I constructed yeah. a whole project around the idea of working with you <laughs> in order to get to work uh, together with you. But, and I got to do it on the, on the tip of a mountain, on the top of a mountain, yeah. uh, on, uh, during Une Solitude Partagée, so this project that, uh, that you uh, graciously uh, uh, decided to come on board with us. And uh, so, so what, what do you well, feel like... Um, when, when, you, when you see good dance and good music go together well, what do you feel like is the magic that happens? Well, I think, uh, Guillaume, uh, this Solitude Partagée is, um, I said it before and I will say it uh, again, this is one of my the favorite, clearly during this pandemic, that was my favorite project. But also I think, you know, even if we forget about the strange times we're in, I think this is a a true example of creativity and uh, something that can be done with at the same big scale and yet intimacy and going right at the core of things with the dance and the music and the nature together and I think those uh, elements were uh, it all went beyond what we imagined and thanks to your imagination and your crazy ideas I, uh, I, I, I could uh, participate so dance in general is the single art form that makes me cry really it's really um of course i can cry with music because i'm a musician but if i accept that i don't necessarily cry when i read uh, books when i uh when i see a uh, watch a play a theater uh, I love plays, I love painting, but I don't know, there's something about dance that makes me, that moves me so much that it makes me cry. It's always been this way and it's still this way. And I think when, um, it's probably because the expression of true humanity, you know, you see the actual person do it. You see the body working, you see the, you're aware of the effort and yet it, transcends at all time the effort in order to become something else but it's quintessentially human because it's actually the person that's there and mm. that is unique and in a way it does share it with music that it's an art form that uh you know if if you know you showed me a little piece of paper about how you choreograph this uh piece uh, for our solitude partagé and mm. You know, I don't know the language of choreography, so it didn't tell me anything to watch the paper. It needed you to dance it in order to make it alive. It's the same for music. You know, if you watch a score, a score I mean, you know music, but I mean, some, if some people doesn't know music, you know, it doesn't mean anything until someone brings it to light. It's very different than a painting that actually exists once someone puts the eyes on the, the the painting or the photo photography and even theater if you think about it we can all read languages so if i open a shakespeare play i can imagine this the staging so mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that's why i feel that when it goes really well together it's when those two forces of music and and, and movement just uh, transcend or transcended in it by themselves and they transcend each other even by doing it together. And I guess it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's just, there's nothing more beautiful. 
So this, uh, this time, that's a, a, as close of a, of a duet with Guillaume that you could have done. So we, we, we brought a, a grand piano on the top of a mountain and built you guys a stage. So how, how was it to be back behind the piano and, and also, I mean, sort of dancing with, with Guillaume? How was that this summer? Yeah, well, the, the, first the piano aspect is, uh, it's really important because that gets me back to, to my roots. Uh, uh, as a pianist and it's something that I was always doing more on the side and of course in the pandemic it became my salvation <laughs> to be able to have the piano and still get in touch with music so uh, it just happened that this project arrived and it, it gave me the courage to be there on my own because I think it you know dance on, to dance a solo is probably like also play a solo mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. You don't have anything else that you feel even more uh, bare, you know, that, that, that then there, there's nothing to hide, basically. And I'm not saying that the conductor is hiding things, but, you know, <laughs> basically, I'm never give, doing the, 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 the producing the sound. I'm inviting the sound. So now that was very important for me. And then to collaborate with Guillaume and make sure the collaboration went further than I thought because I thought always that because we created this separately that we would put it together and it, it would be kind of a, I don't know, I sort of imagined maybe an improvisation aspect of it. And I love that your mind was such that it was so detailed and it gave me the inspiration of being also very detailed with it. So. I mean, uh, then that was second part, but the third part was to try to remain that focus and that detail, but being in different environment and with the sun and the, the, and the, the mosquitoes the, the, and the, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were not so bad, the mosquitoes. They were okay, I mm. I, but I, I so loved that, uh, what I wanted to specifically make choreography that fit the music perfectly because I wanted to be, I wanted to be in, complete conversation with you because I felt like if I'm going to work with you and with Yannick Nidus again then I want to make sure that it's related that we that I take it from you and you there's moments where you take it from me so yeah with a there was such a such simplicity to to uh, Eric Eric's piece Eric Champagne who was a, a phenomenal composer who was also attached to the uh to the mute to the wonderful music of of our piece uh, of our piece Echo um and it feels like I don't know, it felt like all three elements were minimal, but they were, they were just enough, they were just right. So, so uh, for me, it was such a, such a treat to have sort of it all sort of gel together so beautifully. But, but you're, you're saying is something important. It's true that I uh, take it from the music is great, but also from, you're right, it was, and you can see it in the video that sometimes I'm looking and I'm waiting, but it's not even waiting. It's, it's the magic of being together. It's, actually it's not anyone who's following or leading it's more at, after a while what, if you're in the same zone it's anticipating the other and then it doesn't become about who's leading or waiting and for this i what helped me was working with singers obviously because i yes. think that operatically it's a little bit the same if i'm a con conducting an opera uh, people ask me sometimes, are you giving the cue or is the singer breathing? Well, at some point you work and you try to just do it together. And this is, I think, what we could achieve uh, for Echo. Yeah, absolutely. And, and do you feel like, do you feel like so to, go, to go into uh, to, to the opera side of things and, and to your other, to your career that is just so incredibly versatile in so many ways, um, well, at the moment, uh, during this COVID time, how do you how do you manage doing and seeing the future in in regards to like, you know, what's next? What comes next for you know for the Met Opera versus what comes for the Philharmonic, uh, the the uh, yeah. Philadelphia? So, I mean, big institutions of performing arts where where there's more than just like let's say one art form. I mean, it's it's a strange way of explaining, but this is, I feel, the difference between an orchestra like Philadelphia Orchestra or Orchestra Metropolitan and 
ballet companies like you know the national uh, ballet or the met you know i think opera companies and it's the same for the coc in toronto or opera de montreal i think when you combine many different art forms here or many people working for costumes and lighting and an orchestra and uh, people on stage and choruses and corps de ballet it becomes a bit more complicated to come back sooner i think that is it's not only well it's purely economics but i think it's also because there's so many things involved you can't just decide to strip it to to one portion or the other as for in Philadelphia, we were able to resume streaming concerts uh, without audience, but it's still very limited. You know, we can't be 100 on stage. We have to be, I don't know, 40, 45. Orchestre Metropolitan is a bit the same, although it's better in, in Canada than in the States for that uh, matter. But I, the meta is going to remain closed until September 2021, which is very sad. On the other hand, and this is my hope, um, is that this is hitting us so hard as an art form and as artists uh, that, and some people, you know, uh, having difficulty to, to survive this and to live, that I hope that, and I see it, I'm actually convinced that when we get back together, we will uh, not take anything for granted and we will also maybe strip our art forms, respective art forms from all the unnecessary stuff. I'm not saying that it won't be as big or as grand. Sometimes we want the grandiose, but some certain habits and certain unjustified traditions yes. have sometimes creeped in and added some weight on what, and deprived us from maybe staying in touch with why we do this. Yes. I think, you know, if I can do a, give an example, you know, why uh, in opera uh, doing La Bohème, Puccini is a masterpiece, but why doing it every year for tw 20 times a year if the heart is not there? You know, let's do some Bohème, but let's also put more, uh, give more space and uh, more stage time to the composers of our time, to creations, to to the reflections of our time. Um, maybe concerts will become shorter, who knows? You know, sometimes there's big pieces, big ballets and big operas that need to have intermission. But sometimes if you don't need an intermission and if you have 90 minutes through, maybe that's also possible. I, I hope that it will become, it's a conversation that I think our respective our art forms have been having constantly and especially in the last 10 years. But this will have to make it real and that's, that's, uh, that's, that's exciting. That is that is exciting to think about. It's true because I, I do think uh, in ballet we're in the same we're in the same in the same situation very much so. I mean, it is about the dance essentially, and it's about it's not so much about the tradition of the experience and all of that. That can be modified somewhat, right? But yeah, but, but it was funny because I read this New York Times article that uh, that was about you, and and basically it was a it quoted and it said something that it was all all about the music you know you you are all about the music and even though it's a huge massive production you're still the core of it is essentially the music it's the art it's it's what it is and i feel like with yeah. dance it's a bit the same and i found that very inspiring because because often with the dance we'll we'll get carried away or get carried away with costumes and sets or effects or this and that but but essentially it's all always about the dance it's always about the actual art form that it is and 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 you're you're very much correct in in saying you know that that i think um that i think it, we've it snowballed some traditions that we could kind of maybe uh you know i, I i'm not saying we need to you know also no, no, but, it's, it's, angry, but i think i think it's a, <laughs> just small <laughs> small small things maybe maybe not yeah, all i mean you know, you know so, so, on top of mountains but still tra traditions are not necessarily a bad thing but when we're when they become something we get used to and we forget where they come from that's the danger and mm -hmm. it's i'm you know it's far from you uh, i'm far from saying that at the moment you know we needed this or it's great that this happened because of course not yeah. but in every and this is a strength of art through times through history that through crisis creators think differently and actually come up with 
solutions that actually make evolve because we, art will never be dead. Uh, yeah. We have to take care in the meantime of our artists and make sure that, you know, uh, everybody who has mastered a craft is given the, the means and the tools to survive all this in order to emerge from this stronger. And I think great institutions like in our country and also in the, in the United States uh, have the ability to do so. And that's what I hope. I have, a, I have a quick question for you because I'm, 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 I'm a bit curious too because I feel like, okay, so I want to know about digital and your view on digital and, and also because you told me that dance can make you cry sometimes. Has anything made you cry watching it on digital? Actually, yes. And no, it feels like, um, it feels like I'm just uh, preaching for my own, uh, you know, <laughs> to the converted. Okay, but okay. I mean, it, it, or tooting my own horn or something. But I, I um, definitely, um, some of the films from this Saint Sauveur project, Solicite Partage, were, you know, wh whenever you would send me uh, Etienne, the rough draft, you know, for mm -hmm. me to comment. And then the first time round, almost all of them I was just tearing up so uh, it does I mean maybe it does because I know what it is you know that's my theory I think that we love to watch for example operas on DVD or on TV uh, because we know what it is to be in the hall and then you go in the t television and it's like oh I, I'm moving myself now on the uh, in the in the core in the center and more close-ups mm. because we know what it feels so i don't i'm not sure if i would be as moved if i didn't know what it was to be in a hall with an audience having the full view and sharing that kind of emotional and real moment and this in dance this danger of all times you know that you're never sure, quite sure, if everything will land to mm. the right way, will be together, this kind of um, mm. tightrope situation. So, uh, but digital in the meantime can also allow us to be closer to the, to feel that we're closer to the interpreter as well. So it's a combination of both. And I, I still believe in the hand in hand collaboration between live and digital. Is that but, something you, have you, you know, you've done a lot of digital now, so you've done all the 10 films with us, you did, I, you did that, um, the uh, concert on the top of the uh, Mont Royal, with, uh, with, it was, which was beautiful, and Pastoral, and uh, uh, is that something, like, do you feel like you've learned something or the, 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 about the art form on digital from the beginning of the pandemic to now? Do you see it differently, or was it something you already have felt? Well, I do see it differently. I, like many people, I may be less scared of it um, uh, than I wa used to. I, it's interesting how we can, but we have to work hard. But recently, in, uh, at Orchestre Metropolitain, we recorded uh, for streaming uh, 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 the Requiem of Gabriel Fauré, and it's one of the most touching pieces of music. And you know, no audience at all. And I thought, well, you know, is, is it gonna be dry? But actually, if you can create and think of the audience and focus on the message you're doing as musicians, then it's, it's possible to obtain a, a great um, de condensed and still very emotional feeling. Mm. But, the issue is more about, you know, it's not so much, you know, that we forget about the audience because, you know, of course, when, as soon as an audience is live there, then, then this is the real reason why we do this. But it's also an, a question of understanding that we can actually do digital because there is at some point some life. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, what I've learned though is it's not so much the digital, but the distancing. That was an interesting thing that I learned, that yes. uh, I was not expecting to enjoy 
or think that it was possible, but a little bit more distance between the musicians. Uh, well, without exaggeration though, because, <laughs> you know, uh, when it's in plexiglass cages, that's different. But in Montreal, we were just 1.5 meters apart and two meters. Actually, it brings air, uh, it gives air to the sound and brings kind of a multiplication of the resonance because the, the, the bodies, the physical bodies don't block the sound anymore. So there's something interesting about it. You know, sometimes when, and it teaches me to always remain open to, you know, solutions. Because seriously, uh, one year ago, you would have asked me, would I have, uh, is it possible for an orchestra to be two meters apart? So no way, just no way. And now, you know, if you have no choice, then you try is that, it. Is that, is that something you're going to request from now on? You want the, just a <laughs> yeah. <at> stage? <laughs> yeah. And it's, I it's, won't it's, go it's to possible. that extent. I won't <laughs> go to that extent, but, but I know that my musicians in Orchestra Metropolitan, they want to keep each their own stand instead of sharing the same stand. Nice. They want to keep that now forever. So That's see, true. there's a, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to say, I will never, ever get used to the mask while dancing that's, yeah. for sure. oh, that's for sure that's... one of the things that i won't but but that's very interesting to hear that like even even as a like the inner workings of an orchestra is being affected by this and and maybe maybe changed uh, you know improved yes yeah. so that's interesting but so, the last thing uh, no i agree with you <laughs> yeah i find i find that with with dance th th that's also why with Solitude Partagée for us, what was interesting is, is it was the idea of the solos and the idea yeah. of the one person, because as soon as you have a duo, then, then it gets, gets in a little bit complicated, which, was, which, was, which is what's making it really difficult for National Ballet of Canada to, to be working at the moment, you know? So, but if I go back to Solitude Partagée, I thought, um, I wanted to know if you had maybe two very memorable moments from, from um, from some of the films, from some of the films that you saw and, and maybe that you'd like to share with us that you felt like were completely out of the ordinary or, or surprised whatever. you. Yeah, surprised you. Well, the shock of the first one, the shock of the first film, um, you know, uh, Marie Chouina, I mean, um, it, it, I just thought of, ourselves being lost and being alone oh. and then discovering another human being at the end who's the percussionist at Alexandre and just that kind of scream of ah oh, you know like there's another human and at, at that moment I just and of course we were in the thick of the pandemic and I just thought well here we are, deprived from any this social contact, and it, it brings us back to our, you know, earlier state as human beings of being more alone in the jungle, and then, oh, there's another one, and that's our salvation. Mm. Um, so that's very memorable for me, and I think that Crazy Smooth with, um, mm -hmm. uh, with our Simon, mm -hmm. The combination, I mean, but then, then once I do this, then the, the history of the horn as well, I just thought was uh, with Eva and, um, mm -hmm. oh my God, the running, you know, yeah. with, the, <laughs> with the violin, you know, and, 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 you know, the me most memorable is, of course, ours. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Did, you, like did it feel part. like the, 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 I mean, it was quite amazing. I mean, you know, we, we did a joke with the piano, but the setting was like, it was at the top of a mountain where we had a 30 by 30 stage and, and a grand piano. Was it, did it feel different to play there? Like, obviously the sound was different, but was it as majestic as it looked or, you know? Oh, absolutely. The fresh air, the, the, but the, you know, I, that was always my favorite moment uh, since I'm a conductor, to conduct open air concerts. So now to be able to play, mm. and usually in open air, you know, there still are chairs and there's a stage with covered, but now it's really open air. Mm. So mm. I feel that nature brings the best out of us all the time. 
And that time, and I, we can hear it on the film, but and on every film, we can hear also when the, the, the birds are singing yes. and when all the, this noise, which I think is adding the layer. Um, yeah, it was truly inspiring. It was very early also in the morning uh, yes. that we needed to be there. And I, I loved it. I love to experience the, 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 the transition between this early and then really the sun uh, being very hot and uh, uh, yeah that that is clearly part of the experience I would say that nature was playing with us and we were playing with nature yeah, as as an equal partner I have to say I had a moment during when we were both looking out I think maybe it was like the last time I think we, we actually didn't do it that many times surprisingly we, we had no, our together <laughs> 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 We knew how to prepare, I guess. Um, but the really wonderful thing is like, I think when we ran it through the third time and we started the beginning and we're both looking out into the horizon, I had a moment where I was like, well, this is, this is one of my dreams come true in every way, you know, to watch you there and to, to be looking out on this sort of beautiful landscape and, and to be, you know, to be dancing to Eric's music as well was, was just completely special. So I, I think, uh, I think I'm, I can say, uh, you know, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much to, uh, to have spent some time with us today for this uh, Inspired to Dance uh, question and answer series. Yannick, you are such an inspiration to me. You're such an inspiration to so many. And I know the National Ballet of Canada patrons and all the National Ballet of Canada fans will be so truly touched that you took the time to, uh, to speak to us uh, today. So thank you so much. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm greetings to all of the National Ballet fans and members and patrons and to you, uh, to you both, you are moving um, the world of dance and arts in Quebec and in Canada and, you know, thanks to you and because we're not too old, I think we're going to collaborate uh, a lot in the future. Anytime. I'm the oldest Anytime. one here, but, you know, I'm still not too old. <laughs> Thank you, that would be an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Yannick. Yeah, so that was uh, that was so interesting to see where we were this summer and uh, and have this really incredible discussion with one of Canada's really greatest artists. I mean, Amazing. to be in charge, you know, he's he's so inspiring. And during this whole pandemic, he's been sort of, you know, reaching out to different institutions, doing different initiatives for music. And uh, and I think he's uh, he's one of the most inspiring people uh, I've ever met. So I'm really really proud of uh, of the project that we were able to put together with him, but more especially for this moment. It was so nice to be able to get a conversation for all of our donors at the National Ballet of Canada. So thank you to all of the donors at the National Ballet of Canada who stuck with us during this uh, incredibly difficult and challenging time. Uh, we are aware that, uh, that you know, we haven't been uh, able to uh, connect with you on a personal level for the last little while, but uh, but we so appreciate your support. We appreciate your presence, <clears throat> even though uh, we are not able to see you. We are feeling your support, and thank you again for supporting Together for Ballet. Absolutely, we uh, I, I echo what Guillaume said. It's been uh, it's been very challenging for all the dancers and all the artists and the whole team at the National Ballet of Canada. But what's gotten us through is the how much uh, love we've gotten from our family. Uh, here in, in Toronto and in Canada and all our donors and friends. Um, the one thing we thought we could do is, uh, is uh, as it was mentioned in the, uh, the conversation with Yannick, uh, Guillaume and Yannick did uh, one of the, the 10 films that uh, on top of a mountain in saint Sauveur in a beautiful setting. And uh, we thought you might wanna see the result of, uh, of all that work. So um, we wanted to show you Echo, the name of the film, uh, music by Eric Champagne played by Yannick Nezaseguin and danced by our very own Guillaume Cote. I hope you enjoy it.